All right, what's going on, YouTube? It's Trey Leo, and here we are. We are here, and hope everyone's doing good. I'm going to analyze Mr. Childish Gambino's message here, and this is America. Oh man, honestly, I don't even know where to begin. Like, I watched the video several times, but I still don't understand certain concepts so I'm just going to touch on the ones that I do and more likely it may be the ones that other people have touched on though I'm gonna try to cover some some things that they didn't um first of all the opening lyrics yeah 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 probably some more yes go go away now what does that sound like to me well Personally, for me, I think that he's trying to reach out and and give you a mindset of where this is going. Like, nobody cares. Now, not to say that nobody cares about the video. Not to say that nobody cares about what's going on in, in society. Like, everyone has this, yeah, 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 go away attitude if it doesn't pertain to me or uh, other people surrounding me directly or indirectly. You know what I mean? Like we see things that are portrayed on TV as tragic and and devastating, but at the same time, it's not exactly as touching as it would be if you were to actually be in that situation. At any rate, that's what I'm I think. That's what he's trying to get at. Not to say that everyone's like that, but the general consensus here is that a lot of people are doing their own thing. Now, let's just continue to go on a little bit further down. All right, so it says, we just want a party, party just for you. We just want the money, money just for you. So, once again, it continues the tone in which I was saying how it's a selfish type of mentality where, you know, it's kind of like me, 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 and hey, glamorous me, you know. Also, I noticed that, let me fast forward this a little bit or go a little bit further. Well, first, here's he, he's <laughs> strutting, seemingly strutting, but if you notice his pants, his pants are, all right, so his pants are dress pants. Now, not just any type of dress pants, but these are dress pants that are reminiscent to the slave area or, uh, yeah, that slave period of time, you know. I'm honestly not sure, don't get me wrong, I'm not sure if the slaves wore this attire or if it was the master that wore this attire, though, honestly, it looks too good for to be slave pants, but then again, I don't, I don't know, it might be slave pants, because it has no, it doesn't really, it doesn't seem to have pockets, and he's, well, he doesn't have like a belt, and I know that back in those times, they didn't have belts, they used string to hold up their pants, um, at any rate, just had to notice that and the whole stance that he takes right here now for those who don't know I'm sorry for those who don't know let's just take a look see what we got here because I had some some references that I was going to make mention too oops you know a little sneak peek behind the scenes of my videos here <laughs> but there here we go this stance that he's doing right here, he's mocking the Jim Crow. Uh, and I say he's not mocking it, but he's referencing the Jim Crow era in, in his little stance here in which he shoots seemingly looks like Trayvon Martin's dad. Now, I don't understand why exactly Trayvon Martin's dad would be playing a guitar and singing. But it's almost like he's just like kind of playing to the tune or going along with the program. You know, he lost his son and it's tragic. But at the same time, 
you know, I don't want to speak on it too much because it's just a sensitive subject and I don't want to say anything that, you know, may or may not piss some people off. So I don't know. I don't I don't know what he's trying to reference towards this. He shoots him. It's also mysterious because it's kind of like it's almost like him being America. He's representing America. He's shooting Trayvon Martin. So it's kind of like, yeah, we are. Not gonna do anything for you, you know, which kind of sort of what happened in that particular case. Like, nothing, no justice was served, and it was just like, hey, screw you. And he kind of shot him. It was like getting shot, you know, in a sense. This is America. And then he says, This is America. But notice this boy, how how he takes the gun. He's got a cloth for no fingerprints, so he don't put fingerprints on it to incriminate himself. But. Is you see how those people, they 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 grab this guy, not in the same manner, and it's almost like he don't, it doesn't even matter, you know. This guns being treated more delicately than this human body or this life that was once a person, you know what I mean? It's completely backwards. I don't know what that means either. You take it as you want, you know, but this is just what I seen, and is he had a, a guy. And, and baggy pants was like Timberlands in the background running. It looks like he had a hood. He has a hood on, so he might be referencing some more of uh, the, the um, black violence on um, police. I mean, sorry. <laughs> the police violence on black people. I said that the wrong way. But you can't, he keeps saying, don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping now. So he's saying, this is America. Like, shit happens. Don't get caught slipping. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, I do, I do like how the dances are a distraction. Like, if you look in the background here. There's a lot of things going on. You got these individuals seemingly probably still in the car. It looks it looks very chaotic. But the focus, the focus is Mr. Gambino. Everything else is out of focus. Mr. Gambino and his his entourage are focused in the frame. So that's kind of emphasizing like, look, there's a lot of things going on in America. But look at look at this. There's trendy dances. There are, are things happening also. To got kind of sort of deviate your attention away from, you know, these other other things. Sad but true. You know, not everyone's like that. I'm just putting out there what he may or may not be saying in this video. Police be tripping up. Yeah, this is America. Hey. Guns in my area. Hey. I got the strap. Hey. So he said, guns in my area, I got the strap. I gotta carry him. And he's gotta carry him. So he could also be referring to the dire situation in places like, you know, Chicago and other, I mean, even in, in, it's everywhere, but, you know, you hear about Chicago, you hear about other places so much where, to the point where it's like, dang, man, this is like, they, they call it Chirac, I, uh, I think Chicago is called Chirac at one point in time, I'm not sure if it's still called that, but I'm pretty sure it probably is, it's just to show you how dire the situation is, like, you know, these people are, just murdering each other and it's just like the norm hence also how casually he moved on from killing or shooting Trayvon I'm sorry shooting the guy in the in the beginning with a guitar who we're not going to say is Trayvon Martin because everyone's saying it is not I Trayvon Martin's dad I mean but that's that's another story yeah yeah I'm gonna go into this yeah yeah this is gorilla yeah yeah I'm gonna go get the bag now, a lot of people reference this in the background. If you pay attention to the ground, you see a, a white chicken and you also see a brown chicken. Now, people try to emphasize how they're facing away from each other, which could kind of make sense in the sense that, you know, sadly, but true, black and white people are kind of pit against each other with all this controversy that's going on. You know, it's sad that it has to be. So it's like, I mean, in 2012, I mean, 2018, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm 
mixing up my time and errors. But I mean, even in 2012, one was saying things of that nature like it's 2012. Why is it still racism? And here we are, 2018, still saying the same thing. Like, I mean, it's sad, but it's the way it is. Some people don't know how to change, and it's this a interesting system that we live in. And Josh Gambino, this is America. Like, there's a lot of things going on. And you got the man in the background. Pay attention with the red. With he's standing on the car. These guys, it's money gun. So he's making it rain, you know, he just, that's just more like emphasizing the, the precarious spending and things of that nature. Then there's those people in the background just running. I mean, there seem to be like looting. So it's a celebration and then there's also crime and it's just going to show you how chaotic things are. I mean, the wow, Cambino still dancing. Now, I I have mixed feelings about this, but obviously this is we know what this is talking about. So let's just let's. now it's saying get your money, black man, get your money. Grandma told me to get your money. Now, I mean that's just. In America, you need money to survive, obviously. But in reference to them showing these churches, or I'm sorry, these these church member choir members, I can't help but think about the whole fiasco with um, the mega churches. You know, Creflo Dollar with his his leaner jet that he wanted. You know, and these other people who just kind of came out and was getting exposed. T. Jakes, um, Eddie Long. You know, there was us this this vicious attack on the church and that's not to say that you know i mean you know i don't have nothing against them but in the situation that that was occurring there was a lot of mysterious money hungry individuals you know they wanted money and that's a sign of sort of the way the church has always kind of been established i'm sorry if i offend anybody that that goes to these types of churches or institutions but if you look at it they're not really i mean it's the bible's Information should be free. There shouldn't be a charge or a tie that you have to pay on it. Like, you know, I understand maintenance and goes into the the building and, and utilities and things of that nature. But, I mean, millions of dollars? I mean, really? You have multiple facilities across the country. And it, it doesn't seem necessarily more like a church than it is like a, a, a factory, you know, that they're mass producing religion. But anyway, we're not going to, I'm not going to get into that too much. In this particular instance, it, he's talking about, I mean, I feel like he's talking about that. And then he references the, the Char Charlotte shooting where the, the, the young man went to the church. He befriended these individuals in the church and then he end up shooting up the church and what you're about to see so again the cloaked or uh, not the cloaked but the the cloth the individual once again sweeps the gun away from him precariously to a safe place meanwhile you got people you got this guy who seems to have like a two by four in the background right here. And the guy with the maroon. Um, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought he was throwing up a symbol or something. Um, I'm sorry. Oh no, okay. Okay, so it just goes to show you how it's kind of like, yeah, you shot them up and then all these other things ensued afterwards, you know, and it was kind of crazy. It was, I mean, I'm not going to get into what, you know, all the protesting and the things of that nature that happened, but it was a lot. So if you don't know, go do your homework, do your research, go find out because that's what I think that he was portraying to because you see the two guys running. 
And also you see the police car in, in, in this frame. Same frame, but you know what I'm saying. And then he's just doing it again. Like, if you look at his face, he's just emphasizing, like, look, look at me. Look at me. But also, look at the background. There's a guy that's going to, like, just fly over the balancer. Like, within a couple seconds of, watch this. I don't know if you've seen that, but if you didn't. Now check out the left pillar with the red square. There's a guy who just kind of jumps. Anyway, more chaos, more things are being are being portrayed here. Yet yeah, dancing, still celebrating. Hey, got my money. I'm good. It, that's just how people are, you know. It's like you know, I don't know. How else to emphasize is, is this is what the video was more or less talking about. Just America has got all this this chaotic things going on. But hey, we got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got Instagram, we got Snapchat, we got uh, cellular phones, we got YouTube, we got we got all these other things to take us away from the situations that could be at hand. You know, I'm not a politician. I don't know much about politics. I'm not a uh, I don't know what you want to say, uh, a philanthropist or any type. You know, I'm a average, regular dude. You know, I care just as much as other people care. You know, I was taught up, brought brought up, and taught to, to care about people and treat people how you want to be treated. But I cannot lie that to say that I don't see what he's trying to say in this video because that's the case. I, I walk out here every day and I see people just constantly on their phones. You know. You know, on the phone so much to what a point they don't even pay attention to their children. I was driving the other day and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent, but I was driving the other day and I was just going to the store and I was at a red light and this lady had two kids at the bus stop and there wasn't like a, a, a viable sidewalk. It was just dirt. You know, the bus stop was actually on the side of the road. Anyway, she was so into her phone that she didn't notice her kids were kind of strolling into the street. And I kind of honked my horn. I was like, hey, you know, you might want to pay attention to what's going on because, you know, <laughs> your kid's about to go into the street. But anyway, it just goes to show you how much people not necessarily pay attention to things. And me being, I mean, a fairly decent person, I'm not the greatest person in the world, not the worst person in the world either, but I felt the need to say something, to do something, which brings me to the next point in which... He talks about. Hold on. Right here. Well, he says this is the celly. That's a tool. And he's absolutely right. It is a tool, but people use it almost as a window to peer in other people's lives precariously, like. As if it almost doesn't exist. Like, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's some like disassociation you get with seeing something on a screen than you versus you actually seeing something in real life. You know, you don't you don't have that same effect. Like if you went to, I don't know, toured on a virtual tour of Hawaii, obviously you're not going to feel as connected as you was there. But it's a that disassociation almost makes it seem less real. And and because you see all these things portrayed on these social media devices via Instagram, via Facebook, via World Star, it's almost this disassociative reaction to it. Like, well, okay, that's tragic, but what's going on 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 BuzzFeed or what's going on on you know this other sites? There's so much information being thrown at you that people don't necessarily know how to take in everything. You know, it's this it's overload at any rate. That's what I took from this particular part. Now the masks, in which they have on their face, I'm not, I'm not sure what that is about. Maybe that's something to reference to people's different uh, personalities, personas, which 
I don't know if you look it up. The word prosana, the root word derives from a word that meant the mask or the fake you in, in a sense. Like, you know, but I don't know if that's what that is referencing to at any rate. I hope I'm not moving too fast. I hope you still follow me. All right, so you got a lot of things going on in the background here, man. You got you have the horse. Let me rewind like a little bit. So there's a car on fire. If you look to the right here, um, a little past the, the girl with the hair and the skirt on the um, on the right side, not the one closest to Childish Gambino, but the other one next to the young man with the, I think he got on some, some, so he got sneakers on almost. At any rate, there's some things going on in the back uh, dealing with a car. <laughs> It's like they, they, they beating somebody up on a car and then there's a horse. So, a lot of people kind of been, been commenting on this horse and saying that it references uh, Revelation or uh, death, the apocalypse and things like that. But honestly, I don't, I don't, I can't say that that's the case. And meaning that I, I, I researched some things right here and... Um, well, white horse sim symbolism now, uh, okay. In some cultures, white horses stand for the balance of wisdom and power. In others, like Christianity, the white horse is a symbol of death. The horse is a universal symbol for freedom without restraint because riding a horse made people feel they could free themselves from their own bindings. So, with that being said, it could be interpreted in, in two different ways. It could be saying that, hey, you know what? This is prophesied that this is going to happen. Revelations, this white horse, yada, yada, yada. Or, or he's saying, you know what? I know it seems to be bad. And I see that. We see that. But rest assured that hope is just around the corner. Or help is on the way. Or you know what I mean? He's, she's trying to put out a symbol of hope and power and freedom. I mean, you can look at it how you want to look at it. I just want to throw that out there. So he's just, you know, more emphasizing on what he has and things of that nature. But I like this particular part, and I'm going to comment on it in a minute. All right, now, amidst all this stuff was going on, it just got quiet, and then he lit a joint. Now, to me, this is representing that, hey, you know what, despite of all these things that do happen, one can still have peace of mind if he chooses to have so. Now, 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 I'm not saying that marijuana was as the key to that. What I'm saying is that it symbolizes that, and that's how people... Some people relieve stress, you know, they still smoke a joint or they'll take a drink or they'll do various other things. So this is how I see this particular instance. Now, like I said, it's just me. If anybody else has anything to add or, you know, maybe you see something different, please comment in the comment section to what you believe this to be. Now, you know, this is up for open interpretation, obviously, but it's just why I see it. I just checked my phone. Listen, you motherfuckers owe me. I couldn't help but think about um. Well, I thought about Michael Jackson and his trials, and how, despite his trials and tribulations, he was going through. He he got on the top of that car outside of the courthouse and still, you know. 
had a showing for his fans. Now, I don't believe that this is what this is referencing to. But I also thought about something that Dave Chappelle said that, you know, how, you know, black people get on top of them cars and dance with them white people. But that's something that he was also referring to. I think he was also referring to Michael Jackson in that sense. So I don't I don't know what exactly he's going for here. I just I don't know. I don't know if he's still trying to put on a show or he's saying America, you know, I don't. This guy. I mean, it almost was like a celebration or or something in relief to something. But I can't help but to think that. Well, anytime you've seen the warehouse of movies, or where, warehouse scenes in movies, it never was particularly good. And I can't help but to think that this whole video was shot in a warehouse. So there's an underlining undertone of like negativity in which it could be, you know, represented as all the stuff that you see in America. Even him, which I think he's pre, he's supposed to be America. So, um, with that being said, I, I go back and say something then. Despite all these things that you've seen with him smoking the joint, I guess if he was America, then the the joint would be almost like the legalization of weed or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's referencing to him saying that, you know what, we're going to do all this, but here's your phones, here's your cell phones, or your, your gadgets and gizmos, and here's your weed, too. We're going to legalize that almost, almost like more distractions. I don't, I don't know if that's what that means. Let's continue. All right. So, obviously, in the beginning. I mean, at the end, I'm sorry, there you see him running with the mob chasing him, and honestly, I took that as if he was saying that he's, he's saying all this stuff, and are doing all these things, and eventually America, or the citizens, might get tired of it and chase him. If he's America, then, you know, that's what it means, and I bring up this heard a mob mentality because it shows a mob of people and it just basically means that if 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 the trend is that people rise up against their governments and things like that then he could be referencing that america might have its time where you know people might get tired of the tyranny of things that's going on and decide to rise up to the occasion like it could be that or it could be that he's saying that, you know what, just like I'm dancing here, entertaining you on right now, you love me. But the next the next minute I get I could do anything that may offend you and you could be chasing me or crucifying me. So many different interpretations you could you could take from this this whole ordeal. Um, I believe that that, though. Honestly, I done touch on everything that I wanted to touch on because it just kind of it branches off into a whole bunch of another area of weird, weird things. So I just kind of kept it, kept it real basic and real simple. Um, I hope it wasn't too difficult to follow. And let me know what you think in the comment section if I, I missed something and maybe we can get like a little conversation going on in the comment section. All right. So with that being said. I hope you all enjoyed and have, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, and night. And I'll catch you next time. Trey Leo, out.